Hey everyone, my name is Hope Adams, and joining me is Mark Harris and Leland Mori. Hey, <laughs> howdy, folks. Uh, these guys are incredibly seasoned, gifted, anointed worship leaders and songwriters. I know many of us have worshiped with their songs, or maybe we've led their songs in our churches. And so they're an incredible blessing oh, to the body so of Christ. Much. I'm That's so sweet. grateful to be sitting with so you kind. guys. Um, we're going to be talking about songwriting yeah, and specifically unpacking co-writing. Yes. Because I'm sure, as we all know, co-writing can be a little tricky sometimes. Yes. Yes. Um, I love Leland. I heard you say one time it can be like a blind date or <laughs> yeah. like the blind right. It is. So, it really is. I think over the years, um, you know, I I had the privilege of growing up in a really musical family. So, yeah. and I'm, I know, Mark, you come from a similar background, but my mom and my dad were worship leaders growing up. My mom's a classic Texan mom, big voice, yes. big singer, and just amazing. And then my dad is an amazing musician. So we grew wow. up watching them lead worship and they were also songwriters. So we watched them write a little bit as we were younger. But then um, at the beginnings of our band, really, we were just leading worship for our youth group every Thursday night. Awesome. And me and my older brother, Jack, uh, we didn't really know that it was called co-writing, but that's what we were doing. <laughs> we didn't awesome. know there was like a term for it. So, uh, but we would get together at our house, sit around the piano, and I would usually come up with a melody idea or something. My brother was, has always been a really deep thinker mm. and has, uh, has been really great at just lyrics and what are we singing about, what are we trying to say. And so I'm, I'm really thankful as I got older, I realized, oh wow, I've been co-writing with my brother uh, my whole life, which you know, is and, awesome. which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't necessarily make it uh, necessarily easier. Uh, I, I do think that Somebody said this once, that co-writing is, is like a blind date in a therapy session, <laughs> all so rolled true. into one. Oh well and if so you can true. kind of go in with that mindset, understanding, hey, this is going to be challenging. Yeah. It's not going to necessarily be a walk in the park, but also go in with the right mindset. Yeah. You know, what, what, do you, what do you think about that? What's well, I think the therapy session <laughs> is like, I'm like, it's so yeah. true. Because cause the thing that I think about co-writing is that... Uh, you know, like right now, we're leaning forward. We're in this interview talking with one another. But if, but if you lean back in a co-write and kind of pull yourself out of the moment, yeah, because something gets uncomfortable, yeah, then you're going to miss what God has for that co-writing session. And so it's like, and that, I think about the therapy session. Thought I'm like, yeah, because there are things said or things that happen in a therapy session that yeah. are uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. A co-writing session can be uncomfortable. It's, yeah, it because can. you're you have to be vulnerable to you have to be willing to throw thoughts into the room that may not be accepted, but could lead to the perfect yeah. line. Yeah. yeah, and so it's like I think you have to. Uh, I heard it said one time, you have to dare to be awful. Yes, <laughs> that's what that's I think awesome. Cody quoted someone else. Yeah, but, but it's like you do have to dare to. to for your line not to be good yeah. Yeah. and be okay just to throw it out there so that it can be shaped into its best form. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the most kind of restricting things you can do in a co-write is sort of misunderstand co-writing and go mm -hmm. in with an idea that everything that I have to throw out there has to be pretty much pre-packaged and ready to go. Every melody, yeah. Yeah. every lyric idea before I'm going to share it. And, and I've, I've been in that position where I've gone into rights that way, maybe because I'm writing with somebody that I really admire and I don't yeah. want to you know, look like I'm amateur or anything <laughs> like that. Right. And so you can yeah. go in with that perspective, but really all that does is choke the life out I of agree. a songwriter, mm. because out of a co-write, because co-writing, it's the value of co-writing. One thing I've understood over the years is that when I get in a room with three other people to write in a song, even if we're writing for our record or writing, trying mm -hmm. to finish an idea that maybe I started, that the reality is, is all three of those persons in the room have a different perspective of God, wow. have a different view of melody, have a different view of uh, they think and have conversations differently, which means they lyrically write differently than I do. Mm -hmm. And actually, I need all three of their perspectives. Wow. Yeah. So if you go in, I think Absolutely. the enemy wants to do, he wants to flip it and, you know, get you in your head and make you get super self-conscious and, and, and insecure before you go in and then really you're you're just trying to survive that whole time. It's right. a real yeah. terrifying experience. And I've been yes. in that yes. before. But yeah. if you go in with the mentality of no, like um, it doesn't no matter what we're writing for, even if it's for my record or someone else's or I'm going in with the reality that look, everything God does mm -hmm. is in in the context of family. Yeah. You know, God himself is a family, Father, Son yeah. and Spirit. He's adopted us into the beloved. And so 
co-writing is just another expression of that. Yeah, and when awesome. you go in with the mentality of, man, all three of these people, they have something amazing, and I'm going to be the one that defers. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can do that, then actually what you'll find is 99% of the time, you're going to leave with something that you realize there's no way I could have gotten there yeah. by myself and actually fall more in love with the process of co-writing, see it as a treasure and not as this like laborious process. Yeah. Um, and it'll, it'll become an added blessing to your creative life. I, lo I love that. The, the thought that I have is every now and then you land in a co-write with a person that drives the whole time. Yeah. Yes. Like there's no space in the room for anyone yeah. else to, to give a thought or, or a melody or a line because they have a vision of what they want to do. Um, I've been in those kinds of co-writes before, yeah. um, and uh, and so I think what you're saying is so important. When you walk into that writing room with two, or or maybe just one other person, or maybe three other people, um, long to carry them with you where you're yes. going. Like listen more than you talk. Yes. Mm. Uh, but I would also say, but be careful not to just silence your voice. Yeah. Be willing to throw something into the room. Yeah. Um, because your contribution sometimes, you may think it's not the one that's needed, but it, it could be. And, yeah. But I think it is that long to carry other people with you and never be willing to lean out. Yeah. You know, that's mm. the thing. Like I, I've, I remember as a young writer many years ago, um, stepping into my first co-write in Nashville. Yeah. And uh, it, it was with two very established writers. I knew who they were. And like, like you were saying, you know, I was, I was like, wow, I'm writing with them. What yeah. do I have to bring? You know the songs they've written. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, like, yeah. it's, like, Ugh. it's just ratcheting up oh, before you I'm walk in that room. You're I'm so brought, stressed yeah, out. I brought this chorus <laughs> in with me, and, and, uh, and it's like I, I had this really cool little chorus, and they both liked the chorus. And so I was like, great, well, let's write it. I remember them moving so quickly that I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I have nothing to give. Because, yeah, yeah. Because they were established writers, and yeah. so... It wasn't that I didn't have ideas or thoughts, but sometimes as a young writer, you're going to walk into a co-write with experienced right. writers. And it's not that you're not a good writer or so have good. the potential to be a good writer. It's just that people may move quicker than you do. And one of the things to add to that, yeah. I, think, I think is really good, is, is if you're in a room with you know, people that you know who they are, you know what songs they've written, or mm -hmm. they're a more established writer, uh, one thing I learned and kind of found out early on was I tried to take notes of how writers were getting from point A to point B yeah. wow. and tried yeah. to figure out, okay, I mean, every person is completely different, but maybe there are some things that I can apply to my writing life Absolutely. Uh, that they yeah. are kind of demonstrating for me. So yes. for instance, one time me and my brother, we were um, doing a, actually writing a country song, which is awesome. We were in Nashville. And we were going in to write with an amazing writer. Her name is Cindy Morgan. Oh, and yeah. she's just an awesome her. artist. And we, I loved her music, and I always wanted to write with her. So I was excited about being in the room. Uh, she's an amazing piano player, mm -hmm. incredible, uh, prolific piano player. So we rented out this writing room that had this beautiful Steinway & Sons oh, grand wow. piano. It's just you know, one of the old ones. Just oh, yeah. everything that you played sounded amazing. So me and Jack get there. We're a little early. She walks in on time and uh, comes in, and she... Uh, she's so sweet, and she's got this little, it looks like a little ukulele case on her back, and she comes in, she kicks her shoes off, Amazing. and is like, hey guys, it's real sweet, and then she sits down <laughs> in her chair, crosses her legs, and, and goes, uh, and says, hey, if you guys are okay with this, I'm, I was just going to play this ukulele today, is that all right? <laughs> so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to learn this new uh, instrument, so she sits incredible. down, she's got it, and so my brother plays, so we're like, we'll play the piano, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that was really cool. One is yeah. that she, um, mm. so we took note of that. And as we start into this write, we're talking about, the, the song was a relationship song. So we're yeah. talking about, you know, we had this chorus that was wanting to be back with this person again yeah. and kind of going through a, a breakup. And, and she was like, we were on the verses. And we're trying to figure out well, how are we going to tee up that chorus really mm -hmm. well. And so we're sitting there and she just kind of goes, man, like I've been through a couple of bad breakups. Like what, what was that like? I mean, you just, you kind of, I don't know, you you just, you pace the hallways, you know, you see their ghost in the house and, you know, you mm. fall asleep with the TV on and, and yeah. as she's talking, lyrics are just falling out. I'm like, oh my gosh, these <laughs> yeah, are all so good. Incredible. And I just yeah. realized that, you know, all she did was she pulled from her own experience. Yeah. yeah. She began to have a conversation. Yeah. And then she even put herself in the, in the uncomfortable position of getting away from an instrument she's really familiar with. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that she can really think about the lyrics and the song. And you said something earlier. I think co-writing really is a conversation. Mm. Yeah. And if 
uh, if one person's talking the whole time, then there's it's yeah. well, there's people are just no, listening. There's not a, a conversation. It's a monologue. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It. the co-writing is a dialogue yeah. or, yes. or a trialogue, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like too that it's so important to be transparent. You yeah. cannot go into a co-write and yeah. be successful yeah. if you're not vulnerable. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Well, that's the therapy part of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, everyone in the room is also helping you. Uh, discover more about yourself mm. oh, at the yeah. same yeah. time and I think some of the best writers to me are writers who are they understand themselves really well they're, they're not mm. ashamed to be themselves yes they're comfortable in their own skin yeah and and they've just done it enough they realize man I, I'm, I'm gonna be who I am I'm not gonna yeah. try to be all the other people in the room um, and I would say you know it, it really is like breathing in and breathing out you know mm. if you breathe in all day yeah. you're gonna pass out if you breathe out all day <laughs> You're going to pass out. So if you go in with the idea of going, hey, look, there's a rhythm to this mm -hmm. co-writing uh, when That's you're in a so room with good. people, and um, you know, stay in the room mentally and 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 I That's guess really in a supportive good. role. Yeah. That's but great, that though. might you might physically even leave the room a little bit. There's been yeah. times where I've walked around with a guitar, yeah. set it down. There's moments of silence. We're kind of thinking through. Somebody picks it up again and plays. It's this beautiful little song and dance. Absolutely. Um, and the worst is when you end up on opposite sides of the spectrum, where yeah. either everyone's a mute and nobody wants to say anything. Right. Or on the other side of things, where one person's just, just like a the constant stream of consciousness, yes. and then there's no room to think. Yeah. You know. It's so really good. try to be the one that defers. Yeah. Be the one that encourages people. Mm -hmm. Be the one that sees everyone in the room as valuable yeah. to the song and the conversation that's happening. And uh, yeah, and be the one who just cheers things on, you know. And, so and you just said encourages people. So I think one of the things that will uh, kill the, the vibe in the room or really make it hard for people to want to contribute yeah. is if someone says something and then... Uh, then the statement is made. That's a horrible. Like, don't, <laughs> yeah. Like, don't, like <laughs> etiquette is, yeah. is, is, is say, well, let's think through that. Yeah. Like, and I think it, it's like I, when someone, even if the line makes no sense or is like chasing a rabbit yeah. and not a part of the topic, I would never say that's a horrible idea yeah. or a yeah. horrible line. I would also, like the thing that I would, I would say if someone throws something into the room, maybe a younger writer and it's not a great idea, I would say, well, let's think about that. Yeah. Yes. Like mm -hmm. give, give it, an opportunity yes because it, it, like it's a collaborative thing when we're writing with other writers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, number one many times there are writers that are not as experienced in, in a co-write yeah. um, that's kind of to be expected now there are days when you walk into a room and, and it's like the perfect setting where one person is just strong melodically the other one is just an incredible lyricist and then the, the then you may have that person that's in the middle, they're the, they're, they're the editor and the person that kind of yeah. assembles it on the fly and yeah. then you come up with a song real quickly. I've been a part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I've been in all those different seats. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. been the melody. And sometimes you show up into a right and you have to kind of shape to what's in the room, yeah. what yeah. the skills are. But the one thing is encourage people. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you encourage a young writer you will mine gold from them. Yeah, yeah that's right. you will find that if you build them up and affirm them, so they start thinking, I can do this. Yes. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you, you become a co-writer and also really a, a person that stirs up the gift and helps teach them and pull that. greatness out. Yeah. I love exactly that, Mark. Right. That's so good. This is so rich. Yes. <laughs> so good, everything you guys are sharing. As we're closing, what is one thing you would say to our writers who are out there who maybe they haven't found that sweet spot of co-writing. Maybe they're yeah. discouraged. Maybe they did it a couple of times and they're like, I'm never doing that again. That was awkward. <laughs> what What are some things or what's one thing you would say to encourage them? Yeah, go first. Oh, well, um, I would just say just don't give up. Um, if, you, if, you've, if you've never tried co-writing, you've got to start and you got to yeah. start somewhere. So find someone in your life. I think it's important to have good friendships in your life. Uh, but if you're an artistic person, if you're a creative person, it's, it's very important for you to have that one artistic and creative friendship in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, mine happens to be my best friend, which is awesome. Uh, awesome. Casey is one of my closest friends, and so we write a lot of the songs. He's in our band. Mm -hmm. um, but find someone in your life that you can build a creative, artistic friendship with, because that's vitally important. Um, if you've tried co-writing and you've been doing it, and it's just you're kind of hitting your head against the wall, keep going. Don't allow that to discourage you. Um, see people for their value when you're in the room with them. Mm. Be the one that defers to one another. And and over time, you're going to grow into that yeah. incredible thing. Everything God does is in the context of family. 
and you need this mm. family of co-writing in your life to grow as a songwriter. So good. Yeah. Oh, so well, so well said. <laughs> Come on. Did it. So, I, you know, I think the what I would add to that is, uh, I remember as a young writer, um, I would take an idea into the room and I would hold tightly to the content of what I brought into the room. Mm. And I've just learned through the years that you have to be so open-handed and you have to be willing to take the journey. Uh, so instead of being headstrong, uh, be willing to let go of pieces of your idea or the whole idea because sometimes I've walked into a co-write and what I brought in led us to a better idea. Yes. Awesome. A better hook, yes. a better song. And so just go in with open hands and, and be so willing good. to let what you bring into the room be shaped. And then yeah. also, I would just leave you with this. Show up, step in, stay in. Like so show good. up to the room. And, and what that means is show up with something. You know, have an idea, a scripture or just a thought or maybe something you heard in a sermon or, or something that you saw along the way to your co-write. Show up with something, whether it's a melody or a lyric, and then step into the co-write and then stay in. Like even if everything you're throwing into the room seems to not really be landing, yeah. at some point you'll find that something's going to land and it might be the line in the song that everybody falls in love with. So so don't bail on yourself, yeah. don't bail on the right, lean in and stay yeah. there. So good, awesome. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Thank Great you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Oh.